This is just a quick run through of the Insane Bump image filter for GIMP. So, once it's installed it will be available from the Filters menu. With your image open, make sure all the layers of the image that you may be working on that needs to be converted are flattened. And then from Filters, Map, Insane, this will then open a dialog box with a number of properties, and each of which pertains to a particular map. So we have the normal map settings, we have specular, ambient occlusion, and one or two other settings. So once you play around with the values to increase or decrease the severity of the normal map, or the ambient occlusion, or the specular value, click OK. It will then apply a series of macros and filters to the base image and produce a series of other images relative to the map type that we set properties for. Each of these will be saved to the project folder or the folder in which the original source image is saved. Now the crucial ones for normal maps are these four. And what this does is it produces a series of normal maps with different severity of normalization. So what you may find you have to do once these have been produced is to layer these up into a single image and then play around with the blend mode or the transparency values to decrease or increase the amount of normalization in your final image that you would be using in game. And of course once you've done that just flatten the image and save it or export it out in a game friendly format. The other maps it produces that might be useful, specular, ambient occlusion, and then finally a preview image which gives an approximation of the effect of all the maps collectively used together. One thing to note however is that because it doesn't have a preview feature, it does mean having a bit of trial and error, but it may be better to just leave the defaults and then play around with layered images later on once the normal maps have been produced. And that's it, the basics of Insane Bump for GIMP.